I would say Larry Fink being orange pilled, right? You see old videos of him from five, six years ago where he was a Bitcoin skeptic and he's now saying it's going to be part of everyone's portfolio and BlackRock's the largest asset manager. Invesco Galaxy, we're going to try to knock them off the ETF pedestal or at least, you know, be a good battler, competitor in that space. And I think that's important because you're going to have nine, 10, maybe you know, firms trying, you know, build ETF products. That's nine, 10 sales forces going out and telling the Bitcoin story. Mm -hmm. And after that, they'll tell the Ethereum story and probably the Solana story. And so going to bring institutional capital into a space which has been dominated by retail. So that's exciting. Yep. I would say that was one. In this video, Mike Novogratz on the retail forces unleashed by the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETFs. ETFs companies make money on the fees, so they will push their salespeople to market these ETFs to possibly anyone. Also, let's hear what he thinks on the topic of currency debasement and Bitcoin haters. If you like what you are watching, please just give us a thumbs up. Let's get to the video. We're at that point where the only way out of this is to debase your currency some. What the center banks got to try to do, and I think Powell is doing this, you want to talk top or 2%, 2% and allow 3.5%, 4%. Yeah. That's how you slowly inflate away your debt. That year of 10% inflation, that inflated away a bunch of debt. Oh yeah? But what does that also do? It erodes your purchasing power. Yeah, yeah. In 2012, you could buy a house in this country for $190,000. In 2023, the average house is 390. It has doubled in 12 years. It's unbelievable. That's insanity. So if you're a young kid coming out of school, you're screwed. But let me tell you, if you bought Bitcoin in 2010 oh. or 2012, yeah, you're doing you, pretty good. You've protected your purchasing power yeah. against inflation. I mean, that's the simple argument for Bitcoin. And yeah, I'm cherry picking the low, but actually, if you, you look pretty much at any do it any time. Yeah. And so the question just will be, what's the cost of the house going to be in 2030? And is your dollar plus its five percent interest? going to keep up? Are you going to need to have some other assets? It's not just Bitcoin. Like it's Bitcoin. I think silver and gold will go. It's other cryptos. It's equities. So equities go when database currency because yeah. everything is worth less. So the price goes higher. Not anymore. What's wonderful about certainly Bitcoin is it's now just on the macro dashboard. I'm sure when I walk into any macro trader, they've got crude and 10 year and gold and silver and probably the corn price and 10 years and JGBs and Bitcoin. And so it's a macro asset. Most of those funds play it through CME futures. Some, we had a big account recently buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin cash with us. That makes me really happy. You mean spot Bitcoin? Spot Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, not Bitcoin Cali. <laughs> <laughs> the old coin. Yeah, yeah, spot Bitcoin, yep. Spot Bitcoin with yep. us. I think when the ETF shows up, that will be the weapon of choice. Yeah. Why? Because it's easy, it'll have liquidity, it's the same broker, uh, same brokerage account. They'll get margin on it. And so I think you'll see a lot more, both long short equity funds, macro funds, institutional funds participate. I remember I used to have conversations with some of the biggest fund managers in the world, right? Ray Dalio is a perfect example. Right. I remember trying to orange pill that guy over and over. <laughs> it made zero sense for a $160 billion hedge fund to have a position in an asset that was yo big. And so only at a half a trillion, a trillion dollars and real liquidity does any asset make sense for big port for the real big ones. Right. And so we have grown into, we're now big enough for anyone. We weren't when we were a $200 billion asset. We just weren't, right? right? Or, or a $100 billion asset. But as a trillion dollar asset, it's now big enough for almost anyone. And so I think you're gonna see, I always say, what's the difference between Bitcoin and gold? If they got the same macro story, and so I can talk about macro, the gold adoption story happened over 3,000 years. It ain't going anywhere. The Bitcoin adoption story is in its first, it's the second decade and it's picking up steam. And so what I mean by adoption is that people see it as a viable asset. What drives me freaking crazy is when Elizabeth Warren or Jamie Dimon or at times Jenny Allen said, well, I don't really see value in it. I was like, the gall, the arrogance that since you don't see value, there's no value. But Abby Johnson, oh, she must be stupid. Ray Dalio, dumb. Uh, Jeff Yoss, dumb. Pete Berger, dumb. Like the arrogance, you're looking at some of the best investors that have walked this earth that say, hey, there's some value in it, right? Bitcoin's value is the social construct. I say it has value, you say it has value, therefore it has value. I don't care what Elizabeth Warren says. But frankly, I don't care what Jamie Dimon says. Right. And they have been proven wrong, and the group of people that care about it have been proven right. Don't think you're smarter than the market. Yeah. And market value. Hey, listen, you can decide I don't want to buy it. Warren Buffett decided totally. he didn't like it. Charlie Munger, you know, God rest his soul, passed away hating Bitcoin. They were wrong in the, in the time frame 
to operate on. It doesn't matter. Charlie Munger made so much money. He went to, I'm sure he passed away with the biggest smile on his face. He was a great mentor to people. You don't have to be in every, yeah. you don't have to be in every asset, right? I wish I bought Apple stock 20 years ago. I remember buying a bunch of it. I sat with Peter Thiel one day and he convinced this group of people that Apple, Microsoft, Google, these weren't tech stocks, they were monopolies. And I was like, it just clicked. Every once in a while an idea clicks. And so I went and bought a bunch of it, all of it, and had a great year. They were probably all up 30% that year. I sold them all. Mm -hmm. That was 2014. <laughs> yeah, how has it done since then? It's shocking. <laughs> Once you realize something is a monopoly, you never sell it. And so listen, 2024 is gonna be, a, I think, an important year. I really think 2025 is the year where crypto goes. Oh, interesting. Maybe not in price, but I think it takes that long, right? We won't have regulation, I don't think, in 2024. We might, five, 10% chance, we'll get it in 2025. And we need regulation. We just do. And listen, the election is in 11 months. And so then it takes four or five months. So you're, you're really mid 25. I think that's probably when you see these tokenization things start getting to critical mass. And so in some ways, 2024 is going to look a little bit like 2023, with the exception of this giant fire hose called ETF, mm -hmm. bringing new capital into the space. And what that capital does is, is allows people the time to keep investing in the projects that actually change the way people live. Right? Bitcoin can change the way people save and protect their wealth, but it's not going to change the way the financial system operates, right? That's the plumbing of all this decentralized DeFi stuff and, and quasi DeFi stuff and stable coins and tokenized Apple shares and tokenized Stradivarius violins and tokenized whatever. Right. The Bitcoin and other money coming into the space allows me to hire people. It allows my peers to hire people. Right. It, it gives us breathing space to actually build out this revolution. And so thanks to Larry Fink. And, and actually, to be fair, I got to give it a shout to the, the Grayscale team for fighting that. Our take. The Bitcoin spot ETFs will be helpful to paw the Bitcoin narrative to the mainstream media and will force institutions and public traded companies to study and eventually adopt it. It is important to understand that if you buy Bitcoin at ETF, you are buying an index that tracks the price of Bitcoin. You are not buying the actual asset. Once you want to sell your ETF positions, you are going to get US dollars, not the Bitcoin asset. The ETFs are very useful and practical for companies. For normal plebs, the best option might still be buying the real asset and put it in cold storage. Many actors, both private and government people, will try to convince you not to buy Bitcoin for any sort of reasons. It is a scam. It is a Ponzi scheme. Governments will ban it. Get rid of the noise and focus on fundamentals. Bitcoin will shortly be the scarcest asset on Earth. As always, do your own research. Don't trust. Verify.